<laughs> He's not happy. Come on, dude, I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna let you go. No, right between my legs. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> oh, come on. Come on, you're ready. Here you come, right in the net. Nice, nice. Holy crap, look the size of this fish. Wow. Hey, buddy, you're free to go. Oh, there we go. See, second cast. Second cast. I don't know what it is about fishing in the rain, but uh, first rains. Oh, still water fishing. For whatever reason, just, you know, the fish just like all of a sudden turn on. I don't get it. Holy crap. <laughs> that is a quality fish right in the nose. See you later. Sweet. Nice. Hey guys, thanks for tuning into my channel. We finally got some very much needed rain. It has been so dry up in the Pacific Northwest. We have wildfires raging all over the state. And as you can see by this radar shot right here, holy smokes, we got almost an inch of rain last night and it's still raining. So I welcome the rain. It, uh, we are just in desperate need of it. Hopefully a lot of these fires will be, will be extinguished from this event and also the air quality will improve, which it already has. So I'm headed up to one of my favorite lakes up in the mountains. That's right, I am fishing in the rain. It's gonna be cold, it's gonna be windy, and I can't wait to get up there and fish. I got my coffee right here and my gear in the back and we're ready to go fishing. Let's go fly fishing in the rain. All right, let's do this, fish on. That's good. We are here. Man, just incredible how quickly we go from super hot and dry to fall colors and rain and, I mean, it just went from summer and a switch flipped and now it's fall. All right. Got all my stuff crammed in the Jeep here. Man, it is so crazy how it's just like Mother Nature flipped a switch. One second ago, just seems like a, a day ago, we've been dealing with some just ridiculous forest fires up in the Cascade Mountains. Dry conditions, it hadn't rained significantly in months, and all of a sudden, Mother Nature flipped a switch and fall colors came out, it's raining. Hopefully this will put out all the fires that are happening up in the area, but if you look at the uh, screen here, I mean, it's an incredible amount of forest fires that are happening in the Pacific Northwest. So super happy to have it raining. And I don't know what it is, but you know, when it rains all the time, all season long, every day, it gets a little tiring. But after such a dry summer, I cannot wait to get out here and get soaked and hopefully catch some fish. All right, let's get the float tube set up and get out there and fish. All right, fish on. I love this campground got lots of places to you know have a have a squat get your stuff ready
all the Pacific Northwest rain. You gotta love it. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just excited to be out here and get, get soaked. So I don't know how long I'm gonna last. Hopefully the fishing will be good, but it's definitely raining. All right, let's go fishing, fish on. All right, what am I using today? I've got two rods. You saw my three weight earlier and I've got a dry set up on that. I don't think I'm gonna be using that today, but you know, you just never know. I have got a coronamid. See, it's kind of a bright green coronamid. I don't know if you can see that. And tried and true San Juan worm. I think this is gonna work well. I've got my indicator about two feet above the San Juan worm. That seems to be kind of a good starting point. And you know, a still water tactic. So here's a fly fishing tip. A lot of people will just go out right in the middle of the lake and fish. And I like to fish near the edge because fish like to hang out more so along the edge where there's structure, where there's places for them to hide. There's a lot of, there's more weeds on the inside edges. So there's more aquatic life for them to eat. So I always fish the edges of the lake. That doesn't mean I'll never ever go out in the middle, but typically this is where I find fish. So let's, uh, let's test that theory. You know what they say about the uh, first cast of the day, or first fish of the day. First cast, first fish, right? I don't know if that's a good thing. I used a little uh, of that liquid floatant on my uh, indicator, my wool indicator, and man, that thing is just up there nice and high. So you're gonna be able to see that really easily. All right, see how long. Let's see how long this takes, if my fly guess is right, but I fish this lake quite a bit, so I have an idea of what, the, what their preferred fly is. This little spot has always held fish for whatever reason. All right, good, we got that out of the way. No first fish on the first cast, that's a good thing, actually, because you know, if you're superstitious at all, it's generally not a good thing. Oh, there we go. See, second cast. Second cast. <laughs> second cast, first fish. No, now I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have that. I don't have to worry about the superstition part of it. <laughs> well, this looks like a rainbow, maybe? Took the coronamid. That's a good fish. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Where's my net? Where's it? There it is. Yeah, this is a good fish. Come on, net. Whoa, don't go down there. I always like to, fish love to go down by your fins just to mess you up. <laughs> I don't know what it is about fishing in the rain, but um, first rain, still water fishing, for whatever reason, just, you know, the fish just like all of a sudden turn on. I don't get it. But, oh, he came up, thought I had him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Gotta love it when they're big enough to tow you around. <laughs> Come on, baby. I'm gonna bend on that rod. Oh, it's a good bend. That's a nice, solid fish. Wow, it's not wanting to give up. I'll tighten my drag a little bit here. There go. Come on, come on, get in the net. Oh, no you don't. Wow, that's a good fish. Holy crap. Yeah, that is a quality fish right in the nose. Wow. Let's see here. Kind of weirdly hooked. Look at that fish. That is a quality fish. See you later. Sweet. Nice. I don't know what it is about that spot, but this is the first place I go every time I fish this lake and there's always a fish. That was a good sized fish too. 
So I guess right, right? I have the right fly. Uh, I've got the uh, the right uh, depth on the indicator. Things are good. Let's see if we can get another one. You may not be able to see my indicator because it is uh, it's getting assaulted by the rain. Fish on! <laughs> I was I was dorking around and there was a. Just kind of a fish swimming around my indicator. <laughs> I wasn't even looking. See, sometimes I just stop fishing and I'll catch a fish. <laughs> I don't even need the fish to catch a fish. Oh, I love saying that to my buddy too. He hates it when I say that too. It's like, it's like, it's like as soon as you stop paying attention, that's when all of a sudden there's a fish. I'll be kind of surprised if this one stays on because I think he probably had my indicator down for for a while as I was looking around. So let's see if he stays on. But this is either a giant brook trout or another big rainbow. I'm thinking probably big rainbow. Kind of see him underneath there. He's not happy. Come on, dude. I'm going to let you go. I'm going to let you go. Yeah, big old rainbow. Man, there's some lunkers in this lake this year. Holy smokes. I should be careful not to horse them too much. I'm using 4X Tippet. This thing, this thing's giant. Oh my God. Holy smokes. Yeah, this is a big old fat rainbow. Nope. Nope. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Big fish. Yeah, it's probably 20 inches. No, right between my legs. <laughs> Don't do that! <laughs> oh, come on. Come on. You're ready. Here you come. Right in the net. Nice! Nice! Holy crap, look at the size of this fish. Wow. Okay. So you even got the hook jaw starting to come out. Oh! oh. Alright. She's unhooked. Or he's unhooked. Big, you can't get out of the net. Everybody, right, buddy, you're free to go. Nice. Wow, it's great. Got gloves on, so I'm trying not to handle the fish at all. Nice. Not a bad start. A couple of really nice rainbows. I mean, both of those were pushing 20 inches. Gotta love that. I mean, I don't know what it is about fishing in the rain. I mean, sometimes, you know, there are times that I just don't want to get soaked, but I guess it's it's been so hot and dry that I was excited about getting out here and fishing in the rain because typically the fishing, for whatever reason, just picks up right right during or after a rain. I'm, I don't know if uh, any of you have experienced that, but let me know down in the comments if you uh, if you like fishing in the rain and you've experienced the same. So. All right, I'm gonna go paddle over there, see where those rocks are. There's a nice spot right over there that I'm gonna see if I can uh, catch a, another lunker. One of the biggest fish. I've ever caught in this lake happened over there. There we go, fish on. Got you this time. Oh, <laughs> nice. Heavy fish. Looks like he took the coronament. Went a little deeper as you can see. Wow. Wow, it's got, it just keeps pulling. Jeez. Good grief. Oh yeah, he's sizable fish. Holy crap. I think we're pushing some poundage on this one. Holy smokes. Look at the size of this guy. 
Holy crap. That's probably the biggest fish I've ever caught in this lake. And that's that's like four four pounds. And look at this guy, he's huge. Huge fish. Holy Toledo. Alright, buddy. Wow, that was a big fish. Holy crap. It's raining again. Oh no, I love the rain. <laughs> Man, it is, it's cold, probably uh, 40 degrees, maybe in the mid 40s. It's raining and it's windy. And I am paddling over to my spot. <laughs> oh, but it's so glorious because I'm the only one out here. There's no one in the campground. There's no one else on the lake. I have no idea why. <laughs> All right, should be over there in about 10 minutes. I'll see you over there. All right, we are here. I'm going to fish just kind of the edge of it, right over by those uh, logs and, and brush over there is where I caught that big one last time. But there's also some fish that kind of hang out in this little, little hole here. So I just want to make sure I kind of fish my way up to it. I don't want to spook anything, but see that area right over there? Oh my goodness. So last time I was here, I was using a three weight and got to have put on a parachute Adams. There was a fish rising over in those weeds. It's really shallow over there. And my goodness, I hooked into a brook trout that just gave me a ride. It was so much fun. I mean, that thing was just screaming out line. It was just, oh, there it goes. just a, not a huge fish, but man, that thing was powerful. It was so much fun. A lot different day though. Last time I was here, it was just beautiful, sunshiny, clear skies. Quite a difference. But I'm gonna kind of fish this section, uh, get closer and closer to that structure over there, but just wanna make sure that there isn't anybody home here up close. Fish on, I was just, I was dragging my setup over to get in a better position. And I got a little fish that grabbed onto it. Looks like it's a little brook trout. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Dude, you're not supposed to eat. You're not supposed to eat the piranomids when they're swimming like that. That's that's not that's not a natural presentation. I don't know what you're doing. Good, he's already unhooked. Nice little brookie. See that? Nice. Zoom. Off he goes. Yeah, hate the little coronamid. On the run. Wow, what a difference 10 minutes can make. That's the mountains though for you. I mean, it was just pouring not very long ago. Oop, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Rain's coming back. It's okay, it was a nice little break. It's a nice little 10 minute break. All right, now that it's rain has slowed down a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about what I brought today and why. So I brought my big nymph box. Now typically this, you, you use these in rivers, but sometimes these squalor nymphs right here, they worked, they work on lakes. So I brought this box just in case I wanted to tie on one of these big squalas. I've got a box here with a lot of San Juan word and some egg patterns, which can be effective in still water. And a lot of swimming nymphs here, dragonfly nymphs, damselfly nymphs, even a dry damsel that found its way into this box. Coronamid box, this is the box that I generally be digging in the most, right? Because these coronamids are very effective when fishing still water. I brought a small flies, you know, a few blue wing olives, some small patterns, some just some, you know, pre-emergence, some tiny, tiny patterns and a few stimulators that are on the smaller side here, just in case we start seeing some topwater action. I brought uh, forceps with cutters, important. I brought my cigars for obvious reason, right? I've got my nymph box. Now generally, again, this box too, you typically would use uh, in rivers, but a lot of times, you know, I've had success on lakes using some of these nymph patterns. So I bring those just in case. I've got a roll of tippet right here, 4X tippet. 
and I've got a roll of 3x tippet. Oh, all right, sorry, 5x tippet. And I've got a roll of 3x tippet here. I've got some floatants, both the liquid and the gel. Got an indicator, as you can see, over on the rod. Brought also some, uh, some, some more tapered leaders just in case my leader gets too screwed up and I need to change out. A couple other options for indicators in case, you know, I want to switch from that one or I lose that one. Hopefully I don't. I've got a cigar punch. I've got a, a lighter, a knot tool, just in case. And that's some Advil, because you never know there. Why do I have a comb? It's not because I like combing my hair. It's because I like fluffing up my indicator on occasion. When you do real indicators, it's important to have that uh, comb to fluff those up. Let's look on the other side here. On the other side, I've got kind of another rando box here. A couple flies here. Yeah, I probably won't use them, but again, you never know, right? Some big swimming nymphs here. Those are uh, dragonfly nymphs. I've got a bugger box just in case uh, I want to throw a streamer and strip one of those back. And, you know, I always bring these big dries. I have caught fish um, on these big patterns even as late as November. So I just bring those along. And, of course, I got two rods, right? I got my three weight down here, and I've got a dry fly hooked, hooked to that one just in case I start seeing some fish rising. And I got my five weight, which is set up with the indicator setup. And I got a bottle water in the back as well. So I always bring probably more than I ever need just because I like to have every fly that I think that might uh, catch fish at the ready. Even though usually I only use, like I'll probably won't switch from the San Juan worm and Coronamid just because it's, it's working. Um, but you know, <laughs> the one time you don't bring that box is the one time you need it. So it's a, it's a great tactic, right? It's, a, it's, it's always good to bring enough gear to where you're not you're not uh, having to do without and giving your best chance to catch a fish. So that's, that's the gear that I generally bring every time that I do still water fishing. And that pretty much covers all the bases because you just never know. All right, let's go catch another fish. There we go, fish on. Ooh, it scared me. <laughs> nice. Oh, that cove, it just looked good. Looked fishy. Oh, looks like a brook trout. Sweet. Decent sized brook too. Nice. Yeah, this is a nice brook. Look at this guy. Oh yeah, that is a beautiful brook. Look at the colors on this thing. It's got himself all wrapped up. Look at the colors. That is just, just a really beautiful fish. Wow. Hey buddy. Be free. Don't swim down. Swim to the side. There we go. Right where he was supposed to be. That, that cove just looked really fishy and that was a really nice brook for this lake. Typically the brook trout are between eight and 10 inches. That was probably a foot long. So pretty happy about that and the colors. I mean, there's just nothing better than some of these brook trout and how they're colored up, especially when it starts getting into fall. We're in September now and man, just a beautiful fish. All right, let's go catch another one. Look, it's not raining. <laughs> I took the hood off, woohoo. But I'm soaked though. I can literally wring the water out of my gloves. It's all good though. It's a good day fishing so far. Let's go catch another fish, fish on. Well, my spot was pretty productive. Uh, no big rainbows like last time, but some couple of really nice brook trout. So now I'm gonna kinda just fish my way back along the shoreline here. You know, this can be really good fishing kind of by some of the sunken logs and that type thing. So I'm gonna see if there's any brook trout on my way back to my uh, favorite spot where I started. I'm getting a little cold. I mean, I can't believe it. we're still in the summertime and I'm wearing fingerless gloves and my hands are starting to get pretty cold. Water temps are great on the lake. I mean, they're probably in the upper 50s water temp wise. So I'm still doing pretty well. I've got sweats on underneath my waders, but I'm getting a little chilly. And my weather app just warned me there's another uh, 
there's some moderate rainfall about ready to descend upon me in 25 minutes. So I, I've got a little fishing left in me before, uh, before I pack it up, but I am getting a little chilly. I need a new shell too. So I'm going to be going to REI. I've only, I bought this shell only gosh, maybe three years ago and it's, it's leaking. It's got, uh, I could feel my arms wet. So it's not doing a great job keeping all the water out. So I'm getting a little chilly. Not sure what type of ducks those are. I think they might be eiders, maybe? Pretty. If anybody knows what kind of duck that is, leave it in the comments. Are they an eider? Are they a duck? Some sort of seabird. It's another section here I like to stop by on my way back to my favorite fishing hole. Just a really good spot right along the edge there. So that's a bunch of fallen trees and there's like a really deep deep edge that goes along the fallen trees there and fish love to hold in there Let's see if i can drum up a brook trout oh there we go fish on yeah right where he was supposed to be this is a nice brook Oh, I could see, I could see his colors when he jumped up. It's a good fish. I'm pretty sure it's a brook. Oh no, it's just a big rainbow. Ah, oh, I thought he was a brook when I when he first when I first hooked him because he had such bright colors. But this guy just has a really red cheek. Oh yeah, this is a nice fish. Oh, big head shake. Nice. Oh. oh yeah, beautiful fish. Oh, I'll go right down on my fins. Come on, dude. Oh, shit, he's big. Oh, oh, oh. oh he fell out of the net. He's so big. <laughs> oh, my wife keeps telling me I need a bigger net. I think maybe I need to... It's about time I listen to her. Come on. Come on. There we go. Stay in the net. Stay in the net. Stay in the net. Oh, yeah. It's a big fish. There he is, right there. Oh yeah, I got him. I got him unhooked. Oh, he's wrapped. Oh, there we go. Look at that fish. That is a beautiful fish. Wow. There we go. Nice fish on. All right, guys. Uh, mild hyperthermia is starting to set in. I'm starting to get the shivers, so. You know what? I've had a good few hours of fishing out here at my favorite subalpine lake. It's still summer, shockingly, but the rain's come back and wind's picked up and I'm starting to get chilled. So, I had a great day. I really appreciate you joining me and caught some awesome fish. And yeah, can't wait to come back here again, but maybe when it's just a little bit nicer. But I sure enjoyed myself out here and appreciate you taking the time to watch the video. So thanks very much. All right, everybody. Till the next time, fish on.